trap against the Cowboys tonight. And James Harden arrives in Houston today after missing the start of training camp. New details on the Rockets' stars push to be traded. Adrian Wojnarowski is live. This is SportsCenter. Here's Ashley Brewer and Ryan Smith. Well, as we've learned in 2020, anything can happen on any given day. That was the case in the sports world today, Ryan. It absolutely was, Ashley. It's been a major day of twists and turns in sports, so let's go right to it with your headlines. Starting with Michigan-Ohio State, Saturday's game has been canceled due to an increase in COVID-19 cases among the Wolverines. This puts the 5-0 Buckeyes in limbo for the Big Ten title game, though conference athletic directors will meet Wednesday to discuss changing the benchmark for entry from six to five games. Saying he could be the spark we're looking for, Eagles coach Doug Peterson named Jalen Hurts his starting quarterback, replacing Carson Wentz. Philadelphia has lost four in a row and will take on the surging Saints on Sunday. And with little traction in trade talks with the Nets, James Harden has indicated he would be open to joining the 76ers. Sources tell ESPN's Tim McMahon and Adrian Wojnarowski. Harden has not joined the Rockets in camp yet, but was in Houston to take a COVID-19 test today. And the NHL is aiming for a January 13th start date with either a 52 or 56 game schedule. Sources told Emily Kaplan from ESPN. The league is planning temporarily division, divisional realignment and protocols that it hopes to have finalized this week. And more on this breaking news. Saturday's Michigan-Ohio State game has been canceled as COVID cases have increased over the last week within the Wolverines program. Michigan, who was 2-4, and four, had already canceled last Saturday's game against Maryland, then resumed workouts Monday, but ultimately called this week's annual rivalry game off today with advice, of course, from medical experts. Here is Jim Harbaugh today on the cancellation. In the situation you find we found ourselves in, we knew there'd be obstacles. Um, and situation we're in today um, is that the players, really, the players to a man, wanted to play this play this game. This is a daily process, and we follow the daily decisions that are made, and we proceed with uh, what's in the best interest of the health and safety of our players and our staff. Tomorrow there'll be there'll be more information, there'll be more decisions made and, and we'll continue to, to follow those decisions with what's in the best interest of the health and safety of, the, of our players. So what does this cancellation mean? Well, first off, one of the biggest rivalries in all of college football will not be played for the first time since prior to 1920. Also, under the season's COVID-19 rules, Ohio State has only played five games, which currently leaves them one game short of being eligible for the Big Ten title game on December 19th. And unless the conference decides to change the rules, Indiana will represent the East in the championship game against Northwestern. Now, about one hour before that Michigan-Ohio State game was canceled today, Buckeyes coach Ryan Day had this to say about the conference's requirement to play six regular season games. I think it's one of those things that was put into place early on and um, you know, decisions are made based on the information you have at the time and then things change as we know. You know, we have to take a hard look periodically at all this stuff and I think that this is one of those situations. If we don't quite get the, the games we need to get into the championship game, then I think that needs to be looked at hard just like anybody else in the conference. But there's no easy solution in times like this. So you know, I know those guys are going to come together and, and take a hard look at it and, and make sure that it was the right decision. And now college sports reporter Heather Dinich joining us with more. Heather, we just heard Ryan Day there allude to it. But as of right now, Ohio State at 5-0 and needs to play a sixth game to be eligible for the conference title game. What is the likelihood the Big Ten could change this rule now? Well, if it's going to change, the 14 athletic directors are the ones who have to do it. They're meeting tomorrow morning. Just because they discuss it doesn't mean that it will actually happen, and they might not have to do it. We have to wait and see what the status is throughout the rest of the conference, even ongoing tonight in terms of whether or not another opponent might free up for the Buckeyes to play. Well, now as we look at the Big Ten's remaining schedule this weekend, outside of Michigan, all 12 of the remaining Big Ten teams are scheduled to play on Saturday. So what are the Big Ten's options for Ohio State to get a game this weekend? 
Well, last month, the Big Ten presidents and chancellors agreed to a rule that said if there are two healthy teams available that have their opponents cancel because of COVID-19, they can agree to play each other. And earlier in the day today, as this news was breaking about Ohio State and Michigan, Purdue sent out an email saying it was canceling practice today because of COVID-19 tests in its program. They're waiting for results. Now, Purdue is supposed to play Indiana, its regular season rival. If Indiana can't play Purdue, then maybe it can play Ohio State if both schools agree to it by 1 o'clock Eastern on Wednesday. That story is still unfolding. So they can also do some scheduling shuffling. The Big Ten is open to being flexible. Ohio State might be able to make up its game that was canceled against Maryland. But that would mean if Indiana is available, it would have to play Rutgers. So there's all kinds of decision making. They have to be willing to do it. And don't forget, coaches are already preparing to play teams. We're almost midweek here. Mm -hmm. And the Buckeyes, they don't want to just win a, a division title. They want a national title. So as for the college football playoff rankings, Ohio State is currently number four. How do you now expect the committee to evaluate the Buckeyes given today's developments? Well, it depends if they can get into that conference championship game. If Ohio State finishes 6-0, 7-0 with a Big Ten title against Northwestern, I think it's an entirely different conversation. They're probably in that fourth spot. If they don't have the Big Ten title, they are missing that tiebreaker that the selection committee uses when they're comparing teams that are similar. In this case, it would be probably Texas A&M, which also wouldn't have a conference title. So if the Buckeyes don't have that Big Ten title, that fourth spot remains a question. Okay, and those rankings coming your way tonight at 7 p.m. That is on ESPN. Heather, thank you so much for the info. Ashley, breaking news from the NFL. The Philadelphia Eagles have named rookie Jalen Hurts as their new starting quarterback, as first reported by our Adam Schefter and Chris Mortensen. Doug Peterson made the decision today, issuing a statement saying he was looking for a spark to get the team over the hump. Hurts will start Sunday versus the New Orleans Saints with Carson Wentz to serve as the backup. Now, Peterson also said this about Wentz. Very interesting. Carson is like all of us right now. He's disappointed. He's frustrated. It's been a he's been a professional through it all. It's not about Carson Wentz. It's not about one person. Carson's been a big part of the success that we've had. He was on that championship team that got us to that level. Even in 18 and 19, he led the team and got us into the postseason, and I know we can get back to that level. That's why I have so much confidence in him. Here's Sal Palantonio on the quarterback change in Philly. Is the Carson Wentz era over in Philadelphia? Carson Wentz is broken. The Philadelphia Eagles mm. have broken him. He's finished. Wentz will never be a good quarterback again. Doug Peterson's decision to start rookie quarterback Jalen Hurts against the Saints at Lincoln Financial Field Sunday has hit the city like a shock. But it was a move that had to be made and will be greeted with one part relief, one part excitement, and one part trepidation about the future of the team, the franchise, and its $100 million quarterback who has now been benched. Give Hurts some confidence, I guess, and get Carson Wentz right back in. You guys can explain this to me sometime. The yet unexplained part of this whole unexplainable episode is how Carson Wentz could fall so far, so fast. Wentz throwing, and there's the interception. Fly, Seahawks, fly in the Philadelphia end zone. The beginning of the end of Wentz this season happened after that Monday night loss. Wentz spoke to the team and asked for forgiveness and understanding. He apologized. Then Wentz, Peterson, and team leaders met to talk about accountability prior to the game against the Packers in Green Bay. Then on Sunday at Lambeau, looking lost and down 23-3, Wentz was pulled from the game. Hertz energized his teammates, and after the game, players and coaches alike talked about his infusion of playmaking ability and hope. I just felt like where we were as an offense, we needed a spark. You know, we needed we needed something to kind of kind of go our way, and and um, so I decided to uh, you know put Jalen in the game. Now Peterson hopes to catch some of that spark before it's too late. And we will see if he can. And now Sal Palantonio joins us live from Baltimore, where he's covering the Cowboys Ravens matchup tonight. Sal, we're going to get to that game in a moment. 
But let's stay with the Eagles first. What else can you tell us about why they made the switch to Hurts now? Well, after Morton Adam broke the story, Ryan, I texted Doug Peterson this afternoon and I asked him why he made the decision. And here was his text back to me. He said, same reason I made the switch in the game. We need a spark. It's not about one guy here. We all know we need to be better coaches and players. Doing this for the same reason we need a spark. The offense has been poor for many reasons. This is an opportunity for Jalen's development. We still have great belief in Carson as a quarterback and leader of the team, and we have to get him better in the offense as well. You can see, Ryan, he's trying to straddle this fine line, right? Provide a spark to the team. The team knows that Jalen Hurts right now will give them some energy without destroying the confidence long-term for Carson Wentz because financially they are married to him for 2021 and 2022. Yeah, and he's trying to show, I've got faith in my quarterback, even though I'm putting him on the bench, I have to wonder how Carson Wentz is feeling right now. Now let's turn to the Cowboys-Ravens tonight. Baltimore lost to the Steelers last Wednesday, and they were without several frontline players because of a massive COVID-19 outbreak within the organization. I want to take a look at four key players who've now been activated from that COVID-19 list. You see them right there. Expected to play tonight, including Lamar Jackson. So, Sal, I have to ask you, it's been a while, two weeks for these Ravens. What's their mindset entering this game against the Cowboys? They're very anxious to play this game. They want to see if they can bounce back, have the right energy coming off this incredibly difficult COVID-19 break uh, outbreak with this football team. You know, the first thing that's most important, Ryan, is that these players get healthy and whole and that their families get healthy and whole because some of their families have been affected. And the way the Ravens have gone about this has been very judicious, very careful to make sure that each and one of these players gets back onto the football field in a health and safety, safely manner. The bottom line though is they still have six players on the COVID-19 list, including tight end Mark Andrews and linebacker Mark Judat. So it's really important for this team to see how they respond in this football game with Lamar Jackson back on the field and some key offensive players. Yeah, they have been devastated by this outbreak, but it's good to hear, as you say, they're putting their families, their safety first. The Ravens looking to avoid losing four straight for the first time since 2016. We'll see if they can do that tonight. Sal, thanks so much. And stand by for more of tonight's NFL headliner.